candidate, Treasurer John Kennedy. Mm-hmm. And now, now we have another one. Now we have another one, Senate candidate Troy Aber joining us for our five question series. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. All right, wait. So we have these five questions, but yeah, but we also, but we, you're going to get a little line yap after that yeah. YouTube video that you posted. You're going to get a sixth question, okay? <laughs> okay. So did you? My first question: Did you get a blue verified check mark after that on, on YouTube? <laughs> because Bernie and I, I mean, you know, we we totally see where you're coming from, obviously with that. Um, I don't. Uh, we aren't LPB, so we don't know kind of how the decision process goes, but. You know, anyone who's willing to kind of get out of their lane uh, for what they believe in, you know, I think we need we need more of that in Washington. Yeah. So you really had your own debate, right? (laughs) Well, you know, Bernie, it's not easy being John Kennedy. You know, that's why I've been drinking so much weed killer. I have the solutions, but the legislature and the government, they just won't listen, Bernie. So what, I, I had a lot of Bernie, fun. I had a lot of fun one. making uh, making the video. I mean, obviously, it, it's gotten so ridiculous in, this, in our election process to where we have a public entity receiving eight million dollars a year called Louisiana Public Broadcasting, and they put on a senatorial debate, and they put a criteria that you have to have a million dollars in order to qualify to get on the debate. I mean, that's where we're going with these elections. The problem is it's become more about the money than the person. So I have to but, ask but you. Let me just. I got to ask you, Troy, I, I if, it, say this. if the What's requirement that? was polling numbers instead of money, would you have still been in that top group? I, I would. I, I, I would. I would have if you use the margin of error. OK. But gotcha. right, the okay. problem is with the polling criteria is, is this. They put a criteria that said you had to reach five percent. OK. Now, I don't have necessarily have a problem with a polling criteria. But the poll that they used, they said it was nonpartisan, but the 20 people that paid for the poll, many of them gave thousands and thousands of dollars to the five people that participated. So it wasn't a fair poll. Now, that's that's interesting. Okay. And then the other thing is, is that think about this poll. There's 24 candidates in this race. I think they included nine people in the poll. What about the other 15 people? How were they supposed to reach the 5% mark when they wasn't even in the poll? No. The whole thing the whole thing is rigged, and, and, and I, wow. I can tell you this much. I can tell you this much. I know it was a government-funded debate uh, because there was actually more moderators than there were candidates. Okay? <laughs> now, I wish they would have worked as hard on eliminating moderators as they did in eliminating candidates. <laughs> Uh, U.S. Senate candidate Troy Abair joining us uh, on the line this morning. What he basically did when he couldn't make it into the debate, he said, well, I'm going to host my own debate, and I'm going to play all the parts. I'm going to ask the questions. I'm going to pretend to be all the candidates. I'm going to do my own, you know, portion, which is, you know, what I would have to say to some of these questions. Um, And it's about 25 minutes long. It's on the KPL website if you want to check it out. But, you know, you do, whether people agree or disagree with you, um, you know, you have to you have to say that it is frustrating because how do these other candidates get known, especially when it comes to Louisiana public broadcasting, because they do take tax dollar money? Well, Bernie, it's the chicken and egg debate. OK, and what I mean by that is, is that the press or, or LPB is not going to put you on, on the stage unless you're polling well. Well, you're not going to poll well unless you can get your message out to the media. OK, so it's a chicken and egg. The problem is, is you know how you can do it? You can do like Caroline Fayard did and a few of the other ones. You can just buy your way in, okay? And then and then you can do like Bustani and Fleming and John Kennedy. You could just be already in office. But what about the rest of us? What about the rest of us who don't hold a high position? What about the rest of us who can't cut a check for a million dollars? The sad part is, you know where the rest of us is? The rest of us are about 95% of the people in Louisiana. So, I mean, the tail's wagging the dog here, and I think people are sick and tired of it, and that's why... The sad part is on November 8th, half of the people, Bernie, are going to stay home. And that, that ought to be a clear message to everybody that people are just so sick and tired of, of the, what's going on with these elections. Uh, that's why our country's in shambles. That's why the election process, people don't believe in it. They don't even trust or respect the politicians after they get elected. If we don't clean this up, Bernie, we're going to lose our country. So, Troy, I have to ask, and then we're going to get on to, move on to our questions. With a field as large as the Senate field is, 24 candidates, if you are all of a sudden elected or, or appointed to be 
the czar of how this happens in the future, how would you handle 24 candidates to effectively get their message out? You know, and we saw the problems they had with 17 when the Republican uh, presidential field started. Well, look, it's real easy. First of all, first of all, I don't think anybody thinks you can put 24 people on the stage. I never thought that. But what you can easily do is is that you have three debates of eight people. Yeah. Okay? Now, yeah. listen, we're talking about LPB here. <laughs> LPB's program, and I promise you, is wide open. They can have ten debates every day on the air. Nobody watches that stuff anyway. The point is, is that why don't you have three debates of eight? And the reason why LPB should do it, and I understand why a private company would. You know, Raycom's fixing to have a debate. What's interesting is they're a private company. You know, they didn't have any financial uh, criteria in their debate. But you would think that LPB, who is funded with $8 million of taxpayer money, that they would actually say, you know what, we're going to be the channel who lets the little man on. Because the little man can't get on the big high-paid debate. But the little man should be able to get on a debate that he's actually paying some of it for. So that's your answer. It's not complicated, and we saw it done in the presidential primary. Wow. All right, let's move on to our five questions that we have. We've been asking all the candidates, again, on the phone with Senate candidate Troy Abair. Let's start with how would you do the job of senator better than your competitors to win this race? What sets you apart from the others in the field overall? Well, the, the very first thing I would do is, is that I believe that, that you ought to have one term. One term is Senate six years. And the reason I believe that is, is this, is because all of these people every day right now before the campaign, they're raising money. Do you know after the person that wins for senator, the very next day, they're going to start raising money again for their next election. And the problem is, is they go to Washington not to go fight and represent for us. What they actually do is go to Washington and start worrying about the next election. That's why we need one term. And we all and, and so that's what I, that's what I commit to. One term, I'm gonna go do my job for six years over there in the U.S. Senate. I'm gonna fight for the people. I'm not gonna worry about the special interests. And then I'm coming home and let somebody else have a term. We got four and a half other million people that can go over there and do it. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> wow. So, so the big thing that voters, especially here in Acadiana, are yeah. are looking at is the oil industry and the lost jobs in the oil industry. Many in the area facing layoffs. Some businesses even shutting down operations. What would you do to restore jobs in the oil and gas industry uh, right here in Louisiana? The best question you could ever ask is that's what's really meaningful to everybody, especially us in South Louisiana. First of all, as a small businessman, as a non-lawyer, there are three job killers that we have in this country. The first one is taxation, the second one is regulation, and the third one is litigation. So the politicians tax us to death, the bureaucrats regulate us to death, and the lawyers sue us to death. Don't take my word for it. Look at your tax bill. Go try to open up a business, see all the regulations, and then ride down the highway and see every other billboard inviting people to sue. All of those things kill jobs. And we're talking about trying to create jobs. Government government shouldn't be in the position to create jobs. They should be in the position to encourage the private sector to create jobs. Now, I know people say, well, that's just talk or whatever. Until we fix those three things, it's not going to happen. You've beaten good business people over the head, and you're not encouraging them. You're actually discouraging them. So let's move on uh, to, let's just say you are elected. What mm-hmm. does your first month look like in office? Um, with your first order of business, kind of what you want to go as soon as you get there. Now, previous candidates, in fairness, have said one was to find the bathroom and one was to find a parking space. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the first thing would be that you want to do, Troy? Well, I heard, I heard John Kennedy said the other night that he was going to go to lunch with everybody over there. The first thing I'd like to do is I just want to go have lunch with one person, the President of the United States. That's the only lunch I want to go have. The rest of the time, I'll just eat in my office. And I tell you that because I want to go sit down with the President and say, listen, Mr. President, I'm one of 100 senators, and I promise you this. You can count on me if this is your philosophy and if this is what you're going to work towards. The other thing I'll do, the first bill I'm going to file, is that I want to get rid of the EPA. And why? Because we have a DEQ in every state. We don't, it's bad enough that, that they regulate us already. We actually double regulate it. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to file a bill to get rid of the, of the Department of Education. I want you to think about this. The most important thing that we can do is that we have to take care of our children. And yet we have a school board, then we have a state department of education telling the school board what to do, and then we have a national department of education telling them what to do. 
and nobody would disagree, our public school system is in shambles. Mm -hmm. How do you fix it? I don't think it's complicated. You can send a kid to a private school for $6,000. We are paying $10,000 a year to send them to a public school. Why don't we do this? Send every parent a voucher for $8,000. You save the taxpayers $2,000. You give them a couple thousand dollars to buy some nice clothes for the kids and some books. And let them send that kid, little Johnny and little Mary, wherever they think is right. Because the parents know how to educate children better than some bureaucrat in Washington, D.C. All right, question four, and we're talking with Troy Abair, one of the candidates for U.S. Senate. Um, all right, our state, we've had our own issues with race. The, the issue of race has come out in so many different ways in the last couple of years. How do you think race will play a role in how you execute the office if you're elected? Well, first of all, I, I don't think we ought to look at things as black and white. We need to look at them as right and wrong. But I'm going to, I want to say this. Now, you got to talk about, I, I was a Democrat for a long time. So mm-hmm. I can say some of these things. Republicans can't. The first thing I think that minorities need to, need to look at is this. You can't demand equality if you want to be treated special. Okay? So in other words, if you, if the old days when we had separate but equal, well, you can't be equal if you want to be treated separately. And so what we have to do is, I mean, look, we have an African-American in the White House, okay? This country certainly is not perfect, but we need to get away from about everything, everything being black or white. And we've got to restore law and order. I, I, would, I would hate to see, I would hate to see what's going on in law enforcement right now. I'm not sure who would really want to be a cop, and I'm really not sure who would want to be a white cop today. Now, having said that is, is that we all know that, the vast majority of all people of all colors, what do they want? They want security. They want to go to bed at night and put their head on the pillow and sleep safe, knowing that their children are safe. And you know the other thing that's really big, going back to education, do you know, like, you know why, why white people send their kids to a private school? Because they don't like the public schools. Do you know why black people who can afford to send their kids to, to a private school send them? Because they want the best education for their children. I tell you all that because, again, it's not black and white. Blacks and whites want the same thing. We just need to get away from things being black and white and just say, why don't we just be Americans? Let's not be black Americans, white Americans, Latino Americans. Let's just be Americans and fight the problems that we all know that we share and and, and, and bring this country forward. Troy Aber is our guest. The final uh, question is, it has to do really, really with perception. What do you think, Troy, is the biggest misperception about you? Well, I guess the first thing is, is I talk funny, okay? <laughs> I, I talk funny. I, I, if you haven't noticed me, I, I think I have a little accent. I can turn the thing on. I just can't turn the darn thing off. <laughs> and, and the problem is, is when I go somewhere, the, my biggest problem is, is, like you just heard me, I just tell it like it is. And that makes Troy A. Bear a love-hate guy. You either love Troy Bear or you hate me. You know, when I took on the district attorney in Iberia Parish, the people who hated the district attorney, they loved me. The people who liked him, they hated me. When I took on the Queen Bee, okay, which, by the way, i got to give it to her. She beat me. She won. But at the end of the day, I was the guy. If you liked her, you, you hated me. If you hated her, you liked me. The problem is the, this political correctness we have. I just have never bought into being politically correct. And, you know, my whole political career, I'm five for five in elections. I've never lost a single election. How did I win? I just won by telling it like it is. But there's a price you pay. And when you talk funny and you go to North Louisiana, they got to put closed caption on the interview because they don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Sometimes they think you're not that smart. But, you know, that's what I call being country smart. And if country smart doesn't really be is enough for some of the blue bloods in Louisiana, we're too bad. But I can tell you this much. There's more working people, there's more poor people, there's more people that talk more like me than there is that don't. And so all they got to do is wake up, go out and vote. I'm the independent running. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. And if they do that, then we'll change things in Washington. All right. I have one final question. Even though time is gone a little bit over, I am kind of curious about this because you are an independent. Um, We've had some discussions about that here on the show this morning. What is it that moved you? Okay, you used to be a Democrat, then you became a Republican. Now you're an independent. Why? Actually, I I started off as a Republican, then I went Democrat. 
the point is, it's just real easy. And listen, since 2010, I have to just be honest. When Barack Obama got elected president, okay, I just I saw that there was going to be no place for a white guy in the Democratic Party. Now let me let me give you these statistics real quick. See, in, in Louisiana, the Democratic Party is made up of 70 percent minority. The Republican Party is made up of 94 percent white people. And I want to go back to my philosophy. It shouldn't be black or white. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to join a black party, and I'm not going to join a white party. I am just want to be in, in a party that says we're going to look for what things are right and wrong. Because at the end of the day, you know, the Democrats, Democrats actually cater to people who don't want to work. The Republicans are controlled by people who don't have to work. I want to represent the people who have to work every day. And you can't do that in a partisan environment like in Washington, when you're going to go, one thing you know for sure, if a Republican wins, they're going to vote 99% of the time with the Republican. If the Democrat wins, they're going to vote 99% with the Democrat. Why don't they go over there and vote 99% of the time with me and you and the people of Louisiana? And that's why I'm an independent. Wow. Candidate Troy Bear, one of the candidates for U.S. Senate. Sir, I want to thank you so much for your time this morning. We certainly do Please, appreciate it. Thank you so much. You know you're my favorite radio personality. You always have. You always will be. Thank well, you so much for the time. I promise to give you that $20 then. <laughs> <laughs> Make it in cash. All right. <laughs> That's right, babe. All right. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Y'all keep up the good work over there. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> you can listen to all the five questions, a series of interviews that we have yep. All on KPL965.com. We will continue um, to have them up until the election. And if you want to see, uh, you know, Troy Abair's interview or debate, his mock as, debate, yes, his mock debate, you can you can go and check that out as well. Now you uh, had us do a little live on Facebook. This yeah, morning. we did Facebook Live. Yes. So what are, are we going to do that every day now? Uh, I think we'll kind of work it in more and more. You know, I don't okay. always look good in the morning. You always look stunning. Oh, but uh, you want twenty dollars as well? Don't yeah, you? I think so. No, yeah. we'll start to do it more and more. Okay, look so, out for it there. Okay, so basically that means I have to go on a crash diet. I'm going to have to get my nails done today. I'm going to have to get my face reworked. Boy, I got a lot of work to do. Lot to do. Lot to do, yes. All right. Okay. But maybe right. I should actually do some news on the way. Stay with us, yes. 831.